Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by a copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. This is Marv Albert coming to you from the Staples Arena, where LeBron James <laughs> takes on Steph Curry in the NBA Final. Salam alaikum. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa ba'd. In the name of Allah, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his messenger, as he follows. Family, friends, foes, haters, and hate ets, welcome back to another episode of The Features, another round of Convert Profiles with our brother Robert Lee. How are you doing, bro? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, brother uh, Dilal. How are you? Good, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So uh, my last, my last, just let uh, my uh, Lee is actually my middle name. Dufour is my my last name. So. Okay, mashallah. <laughs> no relation to the Confederate general. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make that clear. <laughs> All right, so uh, brother Robert is a convert, and he, I want, I just want to get right into it. So I just want you to explain to us how you became Muslim, what were the circumstances of you become Muslim, and uh, go ahead, the floor is all yours. <laughs> yeah, um, I was born in 1981 to a, um, uh, a family in an all, all mostly all white town uh, just south of Windsor, Ontario. Um, I was raised Catholic, um, went to a Catholic grade school and a Catholic high school. Um, my uh, parents were not really practicing uh, Christians. Uh, you know, they were kind of like uh, Christmas and uh, Easter Christians where they just go to church there. Uh, but they still wanted me to have a, a religious tradition uh, upbringing. Um, my dad was uh, French Canadian. Uh, my mom was uh, American. Uh, my father was a stand up comedian. Mm. Uh, he ran a comedy club uh, along with my, my mom uh, in Windsor. And uh, they, uh, they knew several comedians back then who then became famous, like uh, Tim Allen and Jim Carrey. And, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was pretty cool yeah. to have a, you know, a father, you know, a comedian as a father, uh, though it was kind of like having a trucker as a father because he was on the road a lot. So I didn't see him very often. So my mom would take care of me, my brother. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, not really much influence on Islam. I didn't really hear about Islam until uh, high school, really, when we went on a grade on a high school um, field trip to visit uh, different um, religious buildings, mm -hmm. um, places of worship. So we went to a Hindu temple. And what year uh, is this? We went to an Orthodox. Uh, this was 1997. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I was in grade 10, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the last place we went to was uh, the mosque, uh, the biggest mosque in Windsor, mm -hmm. where I ended up taking my Shahada uh, six years later. Mm -hmm. uh, so lo and behold, so, 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 so <laughs> uh, yeah, I did a tour of the mosque and the, the Muslim sister who was, uh, you know, um, uh, telling us about Islam. I was watching people pray and it was just, uh, really, um, you know, taken involved, you know, of the way that they prayed, how, how long it took, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, the actions, the uh, dedication, uh, that it took, uh, to pray and, uh, you know, just found it uh, pretty fascinating. I didn't think think much that much of it back then. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask, like, do you guys believe in a day of judgment? But mm -hmm. I was not brave enough to, to ask that. So, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so um, yeah, I finished high school. Didn't have much direction with my life at all. I was working part-time at a pizza place. Uh, I didn't go to post-secondary education. So my life was really going nowhere. I was living with my family. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, my bosses were actually from Turkey, um, you know, and they were not practicing uh, Muslims, um, you know, but they're still, you know, like they still were very generous, you know, and uh, you know, they taught me a lot. And one of their friends actually was a, uh, um, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, practicing Muslim. So he said he was like half and half Muslim. He would fast during Ramadan. And, uh, but I didn't, I didn't really learn much about 
but it's not so much about Islam until uh, after 9-11 happened. Um, and when it first happened, I was very angry. I was, you know, uh, angry at the Muslims and Arabs and, you know, how could they do this? You know, um, how could they slam two planes into buildings? Mm -hmm. uh, then a few weeks later, you know, um, one of my dad's friends was just like, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't done by Muslims. <laughs> I'm like, what are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> <laughs> surprise it's like how, how could they find someone's passport on the ground in perfect condition without, yeah. without anybody whenever this evidence is presented to people you'll usually get one of many different questions the first one being, if different planes were used, what happened to the original ones? Unfortunately, there is no way to know what really happened. But if we could examine the black boxes from the planes that were used, we could prove that they weren't the original flights. A commercial plane carries two different black boxes. Each black box carries one of two different recorders, a cockpit voice recorder and a flight data recorder. The cockpit voice recorder records sounds from inside the cockpit, including engine noise, stall warnings, and other sounds of interest. Communications between air traffic control, weather briefings, and conversations between pilots and crew are also recorded. The flight data recorder records at least 28 different parameters, such as time, altitude, speed, and heading. Some also record more than 300 other in-flight characteristics, anything from autopilot to smoke alarms. The recorders themselves are made from the most impervious metals known to men, and the information is recorded along with date and time, and spooled into a continuous roll. Any damage that is done to the roll is done to the outside, as opposed to the inside where the data is. The 9-11 Commission says the CVRs and FDRs from American 11 and United 175 were not found. Yet, the FBI claims to have found the passport of Satam al sakami which managed to fly out of his pocket, through the explosion, and onto the streets of Manhattan below. So, four different black boxes, made from the most resilient materials known to man, were destroyed. Yet, a passport, made from a fragile material known as paper, managed to survive? Who writes this stuff? You know, like, what do they have? Do Muslims have fireproof passports? <laughs> <laughs> So I don't want to make this a conspiracy video, but that, I just wanted to say that because that sparked my interest in becoming very inquisitive and learning more about the world. And, you know, like I became a big conspiracy theorist and, mm -hmm. you know, like looking up videos on how the moon landings weren't real and <laughs> yeah. you know, things like that. And yeah. So I had a very inquisitive mind from the get go. Mm -hmm. um, and then I uh, watched Mal. I got around to watching Malcolm X. I didn't think much of it the back movie? then well, either, but um, the movie, the Spike Lee movie. Okay. Okay. Um, Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it was that one movie yeah, was, was really good. <laughs> yeah, oh, it was it was amazing. Yeah. Um and uh but I didn't think much of it, you know, because most of the film focuses on the nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. Uh it wasn't until the very end when you know he you know he goes on Hajj and then he ends up uh, converting to 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 Sunni uh Islam. So I still have these misconceptions in my head the first time I watched it. I thought, you know, well, uh, I thought in Islam like uh you know, uh, a husband and wife, they have to be, you know, a comparative height in order to be able to get married. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> that's a new one. Yeah. <laughs> that's the first time I heard that one. Man. That's, that's definitely a new one. <laughs> okay, because I think, um, I think Betty, Betty Shabazz asked, asked, asked him that question, I think. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> the second time I watched it, you know, and then on top of that, uh, I would say I watched it a second time and then it became really into the last 30 minutes when he goes on Hajj and, mm -hmm. and also um, we had, a, there was a channel, you know, you're, you're in Canada too, uh, Bilal. So you probably know about um, Vision TV. It was channel 19. Yeah. And they would have uh, um, shows on Islam and they actually interviewed uh, Hamza Yusuf and, mm -hmm. and Yusuf Estes and uh, Bilal Phillips and, you know, mm -hmm. these different, and had, they had the Harun Yahya videos and oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. and uh you know i was very curious mine and i just you know what i was late at night it was you know everyone was asleep and i'm like you know what? i'm just gonna learn about islam you know like you know it's been in the news or whatever i typed up islam on google and the first website i went to had a picture you know of an unborn baby in the mother's womb mm -hmm. and when it was a muslim website i'm like what does this have to do with islam do i have the right website uh yeah yeah <laughs> and the first it was actually the um 
the website form of that that uh, brief illustrated uh, guide to understanding Islam. I don't know, you've probably seen that. Mm -hmm. It's the one they mass produce, and it's like all yeah, colorful yeah. and stuff. Yeah. The first section talks about the miracles in the Quran, and I was hooked from from the get go. It's just like, wow, how could a human being know all of these things in the seventh century? And you know, if it was written back then, and it talks about you know the the Big Bang and the expansion of the universe and the yep. creation of the baby and mm -hmm. uh, the fact that the Dead Sea Basin is the lowest point on Earth. I was I was just blown away. I'm like, there's you know because in high school we were talked about God and you know like uh, had conversations about why we're here on this planet. But the whole thing was you could never prove that God exists. So you know that why that's why you know you. you why even bother following a religion if if it's not gonna if if you can't if it's not gonna be real? Why get married? Why have kids? You know why you know just live like a liberal lifestyle and you know make money and you know do for yourself? You know what's the mm -hmm. point of, of of anything? Yeah. But here you have just this is it right here. This is the book in which there is no doubt. I'm just like Phew, that's mm -hmm. they, they, uh, and just the kicker like was they had this again. Yeah. Looking back though, I, you know. I, Again, some of these, uh, you know, so there's a slippery slope in talking about the miracles of the Quran because, you know, we're going off science and science always changes. So you're putting up the idea that, you know, if these turn out, if science turns out to change, you know, you know, what if it's not what we thought it was? Yeah, um, exactly. But it was enough evidence for me to be like, yeah, this is the truth. And um, I ended up going to the Ramadan came along in 2003 and I you know, was really con um, Ramadan. Uh, Okay, it was back in November, and I was living in Amherstburg, Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, so you can look up Amherstburg, which is close yeah, to yeah, That's like some small place I've never never heard of, right? <laughs> yeah, there's like 20,000 people. A-M-H-E-R-S-T-B-U-R-G, Amherstburg. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it's 30 minutes south of Windsor, and the mosque, the big mosque is in, is in Windsor. It's on Dominion Road. Uh -huh. Um, that was the same mosque that I went to, uh, during that the mosque trip. that you went to in Windsor, who, who was the Imam there at, at the time? Uh, Imam Mustafa Harsa. He was, uh, okay. All right. So did you ever meet, uh, Munir Al-Qasim? It sounds familiar. He may have been there. I just don't think he was the Imam at the time. Okay. All right. Okay. So continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I fasted a few days during Ramadan because I, I was seriously contemplating converting to Islam. Like, I was just like, if it's the truth and if you have to become Muslim in order to, you know, not go to hell and, uh, you know, uh, you know, enter paradise, if Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last prophet, then I, I have no choice. I, you know, this is the correct path that I should take. And, uh, you know, it was a huge, you know, I was contemplating it. And then one day I was just like, you know, I thought I was going to go to the mall. And I drove, you know, to Windsor and instead of going to the mall, I ended up going to the mosque, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I, I walked in and I saw two uh, kids playing basketball and I said, assalamu alaikum. And they said, well, alaikum salam. And I went up to the prayer room and I met the brother from the Tabliki Jamaat. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he started, uh, he's like, okay, would you like to sit down and talk about it and everything? I'm just like, and then he said, well, why do you want to become a Muslim? And I said, well, in my opinion, there's no way that a human being could write that book. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, there's just, it's just too perfect. I mean, mm -hmm. like, uh, it's just, it's impossible and it's been preserved. Um, and there's so many mathematical miracles in it as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it, there's just, it's, it's just, there's no logical conclusion other than that it's the word of God. And he said, well, what are you waiting for then? You know, you already have all the qualities of a, of a Muslim. And I said, well, I just thought I'd think about it, you know, for a little while. And he's like, well, you don't know what could happen when you leave this place. I mean, God forbid you get, get into a car accident or, or something. And by then it could be too late. So he's like, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll give you this room for this room all to yourself for like five minutes. It was like a small room in the back mm -hmm. and just, you know, pray or talk to God or whenever you think is, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. So I was sitting down alone in this room and, uh, you know, all of a sudden my jaw started shaking like a hundred times a second. Like, mm -hmm. like it was just like, I couldn't explain it. It was just like a, like an angel was just grabbing my jaw and just like shaking it up and like, mm -hmm. like this for like a good two, three minutes. And finally I picked up a translation of the Quran from the bookshelf mm -hmm. and I started reading it and the shaking stopped. Mm -hmm. And the brother from the Tabliki Jamaat, he came back and he said, you know, what do you think? And I said, I'm, I'm ready. Let's do it. I want to take my Shahada there. So I ended up mm -hmm. taking my Shahada in front of like about 50 uh, worshipers, I actually walked right in front of a brother right before I went to the front while he was praying. And 
some guy was like flipped out at me, but I was just like, okay, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, bro. Oh, oh stop <laughs> for laughing. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> you see this craziness, man? Uh, he, uh, man, I have stories like that too to because of my, my own experience as well. Like, it's just nuts, man. But anyways, continue. <laughs> when you said yeah, that, so- I was like imagining it in my head. Like, yep, yeah, yep, that's a real thing. Yep, <laughs> that's a thing. And any two blue you mentioned, yes, that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> it actually wasn't a tabliki mash it was back it was the, the dominion mosque is it was like an umbrella mosque so yeah yeah but to and back then jamaat tabliki was just there right doing their thing yeah right? yeah they let them stay there and stuff and uh you know they got their own crew and it was pretty uh you know like you had the basically the tablik and the salafis and you know mm-hmm. like the um, traditional muslims and the immigrant muslims and they're all living under one tent so yeah at the time mm-hmm. uh yeah so i took my shot of there and uh you know like i didn't um tell my family for a, a week or so is, you know, kind of reluctant. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, they invited me to iftar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so I went to iftar and uh, it was during Ramadan actually. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I was talking to, you know, I met the, I, I went back home, you know, I took a shower. I went back uh, and met the, the same brother from the Tabuki Jamaat there. And, you know, we're talking and stuff and, you know, like, uh, you know, like uh, I had, uh, I heard the event for the first time, and he's like, "Okay, you know, it was was just like taken aback, like how beautiful it was and everything." And uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, I I um I met some other brothers there who, be, who I became very good friends with, mm-hmm. and uh, I think the second uh, the, the the day after that, I went to again for iftar, and uh, <laughs> I sat down, you know, to eat. You know, we're getting ready to eat for iftar. I'm sitting next to like some like teenage kids and you know, like, uh, Atik, who was, you know, a good brother that I met there, you know, I established a good relationship with, and they had, they invited someone from the Red Cross, uh, a non-Muslim, non-Muslims from the Red Cross, uh, you know, to speak at this event and everything. And, mm. you know, it was an invitee, like, you know, he, you know, like he, he came along and the Muslim guy was, you know, presenting, you know, like, um, uh, presenting him and stuff. He's like, okay, the, this, this, this is uh, John from the Red Cross. And he's going to, you know, like talk about yeah. uh, the donations we made recently and stuff. And I'm sitting there and there's this, uh, this Palestinian kid, like, you know, uh, sitting like kitty corner from, right? Takes one look at the, at the guy like talking. And then he's like, okay, I'm white. I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that? <laughs> yeah. And no one said anything. Just like, oh. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't wearing like a yarmulke or anything. He was just <laughs> some white dude. <laughs> so I didn't think much of it back. It just stuff like that just slid off my back. I was just, you know, trying to establish as many friendships as possible. And yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and this guy was like, I mean, like, I think you look back, just like, wow, this guy like took his time and mm-hmm. put all this prejudices aside to come to the mosque. Yeah, this is a guy who, you know. Who knows if he's going to take shahada or not? And he, before and you hear something like that, <laughs> but you know what? Yeah, looking back, I'm just like, mm. yeah. And this is back in 2003. It's it's not getting any better. <laughs> but oh, uh, and, and, but I know. But you know, like I said, that's the exception of the rule. I think for the most part. Um, mm. For the first four years that I was Muslim, people were very accepting there of me, and mm. you know they were integrated. The Muslim community in Windsor, you know, they reached out a lot. They ex- had good relations with the greater non-Muslim community, and mm. um, uh, it was a slow start in the beginning in terms of you know I wanted to dive right in and learn as much learn as much about Islam as I could and mm-hmm. start praying five times a day and everything. And it was a difficult adjustment because um, you know like. I would go to Windsor to get my Islamic experience because, you know, there were no Muslims in my hometown. In, in, in and I was living town. with my family. What, what town is that? Uh, Amherstburg is my hometown. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so okay. All right, gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll see it. If you look up Google Maps and go to Windsor, you scroll down a bit south and you'll see it. It's on yeah. the tip of like Lake Erie. Mm-hmm. Mostly like French and Italian, like immigrants there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, but when I would go back home, it was just, you know, like... Um, I would try to be good to my family and stuff. You know, like my, the imam said, like, you know, be good to your family. And, you know, like, yeah. uh, it's important to respect your parents and everything. And, mm-hmm. and the week later, I told my family, and I was actually at a comedy event that my dad was doing. Mm-hmm. And it was for like this, it was at like this, like Italian club. And mm-hmm. 
mm. uh, in between the comedy acts, you know, just like, I, got, I just got to tell him. So I'm like, I need to talk to you, dad. So he's like, what is it, son? So I, I like took him aside to like the lobby where like there was no one there. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm like, dad, I have to tell you something. I, I converted it. I converted to Islam. Mm -hmm. And then he shook my hand. He's like, oh, congratulations. So like, <laughs> you weren't expecting that, eh? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> I'm just like, Allah made it easy for me. <laughs> and then after like he told after he shook my hand, like after you know, like I, I, I told him, he told my family actually. And so my, my, you know, my aunt was there my mom was there. So they were okay with it too. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, he's like, I thought you were going to tell me you were gay. <laughs> 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 but uh, alhamdulillah, it was good. It was a good, ex you know, like I was so happy that, you know, they were accepting and, you know, they didn't kick me out of the house or make any rules stricter for me. So, um, you know, like I think, over time, I was working at the the pizza place, and um, you know, was still trying to learn anything. My but my my life still wasn't really progressing very much. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think it was a good it was good for me because I was able to learn as much about Islam as I could. I spent try to spend as much time with you know learned people, mm -hmm. um, taking classes and 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 uh, you know like taking Al Maghrib Al Maghrib classes and oh, okay. um, getting the Islamic ex experience like. Um, you know, like staying Taro and uh, Itakaf. And um, I met some good brothers who ran a um, an arcade. Um, this was uh, run by two brothers, one of which was a um, um, black Canadian convert to who I you know, have a very good friendship with still, uh, mm -hmm. who converted on the same time I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, his uh, friend who was Syrian. And they wanted to create an environment that, you know, was, uh, you know, like um, kid friendly. Uh, they kept kids out of the street, off the streets and away from doing drugs. And mm -hmm. um, it was called digital reality. Mm -hmm. And this is like, it became like a Muslim hangout. So, you know, like it was great for us because the Muslim community would go there and play land games. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of non-Muslim kids would go there and, you know, they would get, some of them actually took their Shahada, like in their teenagers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, you know, like would actually hang around uh, Muslims. And that, subhanAllah, this uh, arcade was right across the street from my parents' comedy club. Mm -hmm. So this is like, it was like living in two worlds, like you, so I would drive to uh, Windsor with my family, yeah. I would help them take the tickets for the comedy club. And it was like Haram Central, like everything you can think of, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. cigarette smoke and yeah, alcohol yeah. and, um, you know, like people, women. You know, like, um, yeah, free mixing and women. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, I just felt like, like I was in Jehennam, like, yeah, yeah. and I was, and I would take people's, you know, I wanted to help my family out though. So I would, you know, take the tickets and bring the food up and everything. And, mm -hmm. um, and then once I was done doing that, I would go, alhamdulillah, go to digital reality and just hang out there with my friends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that would like, help me like, you know, like, um, you know, like safe, I guess, give me like the, um, the, make me cool, like an ice cube, you know, so that when I go back into the real world, I could, I could survive. So, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. And that's probably the, the first four years of me being uh, Muslim. I know I've talked at length. Uh, do you want me to continue into how like, my life progressed and where I did now? Or what, what would you prefer? Yeah, sure, sure. Let's just do that. That was going to be my next question anyway, right? Like, how, how did the Islam for Europeans end up emerging? You know, what, what was the... the, the... Yes. <laughs> It, it, it was a lot of things. Um, you know, the, there's a couple of points where I look back in my life and uh, I think, yeah, that definitely played a role um, mm -hmm. because I... It was July 28, 1945. The Empire State Building with a B-25 bomber knifing through the fog on its way to New York City. The Army bomber carrying its pilot and two passengers had crashed into the giant building between the 78th and 79th floors. 14 people dead, $1 million in damage. But the building stands intact to this day. On February 14th, 1975, a three alarm fire broke out between the 9th and 14th floors of the North Tower. According to the New York Times, the fire leads to intense scrutiny of the towers and eventually to a decision to install sprinklers. On May 4th, 1988, a 62-story skyscraper in Los Angeles burned for three hours and spread over four floors. It did not collapse. 
on February 23, 1991, a 38 story skyscraper in Philadelphia, built in 1973, burned for more than 19 hours and spread over eight floors. It did not collapse. On October 17, 2004, a 56 story skyscraper in Venezuela, built in 1976, burned for over 17 hours and spread over 26 floors, eventually reaching the roof. Guess what? It did not collapse. On February 12, 2005, the Windsor Building in Madrid, a 32-story tower framed in steel-reinforced concrete, burned for almost 24 hours, completely eradicating the upper 10 stories of the building. Although the top 10 floors of the building fell, the building itself did not collapse. And yet, on September 11, 2001, two 110-story skyscrapers, completed in 1973, burned for 56 and 103 minutes, respectively, over four floors, before collapsing completely to the ground.